Okay, so time for another episode of our Build Your Own Software with Moose, and it's uh, building that password generator that we've been working on. So we've got two episodes done so far. We're now on the third episode. Let's see what we've done so far. Let's just do a quick recap. So we've got the, the, the checkboxes there, and we can speci specify how long to do the password, and we can say generate password, and it comes in there, and then we've got a copy to clipboard button, so we can copy it to the clipboard. Okay, if we exit rerun again, all our settings are forgotten, uh, which we could we could easily make it so we save settings and load them each time the program is run. Uh, but what we might do for now is just make it so all these checkboxes are selected and just choose your favourite number for a password length there. My, my favourite length is probably <laughs> a lot longer than most people's. I tend to like having really long passwords, random numbers, random letters. And I tend to I tend to go whatever the maximum is for the website. So if it's if the website allows me thirty characters, I make that thirty. So I go the maximum, or twenty nine or twenty eight, somewhere in that range anyway. So that my passwords are super hard to crack. Uh, okay, so what we want to do is um, make it so that these are checked by default. So we'll do that first. So here's our code back up to the top. Okay, so that's where we left it last time. I might also put the version number inside. The title bar, so it's displayed in the title bar, and I like a little little dash there, version 0.3 we're working on now. So what we want to do is make out, make it so those options are checked by default. Okay, so we'll make it so that's uppercase checkbox dot, dot set selected to true. And that'll put a little check mark in that box automatically by default, and we'll do it for the other ones as well. So up, uppercase, lowercase digits and the special chars okay. and because I've got problems I've got to line everything up so it's nice and neat my code's got to be beautiful and neat otherwise I can't leave it it's like fingernails down the chalkboard if I leave it messy <laughs> I know I know righto so that's looking pretty good we've got generate password there oh we haven't wired up our copy to clipboard button yet either so let's do that we'll wire up our copy to clipboard okay so so what we've done today is, I'll, I'll keep a little list, so we've uh, add version number to title bar, we've made all password settings, settings, checkboxes checked by default, and like I said we could easily change that later on to make it so it saves the settings. When you exit the program and reload the settings again when we run it we might do that in a future episode if there's interest and um but for now we're just going to make everything everything turned on by default to give us a maximum strength password we'll make it so our length of password is um so that's that's the minimum that's the maximum that's the step when you click the little up arrow down arrows that's the the current currently selected default value when you first display the GUI on screen, so I'm going to make mine 20. I like a longer password, so 20. Okay, uh, and um, so let's wire up the, there's a copy to clipboard button, and that's not even used. No, it's added to the user interface, it's not even used. So let's uh, let's add, 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 make that so it's active. So we'll add an action listener, much the same sort of code as that. But we'll have a copy to clipboard, copy to clipboard button, copy to clipboard method, copy clipboard. Okay, and I like to I like to make my method name so that they're the same as the button name. So generate password, you'll generate password, and it's just got button on the end for the button. Copy clipboard, copy clipboard. Then you know exactly where you're going and things line up perfectly. So if ever you rename the button or rename this, you can just do a search and replace. And you know, the button will follow the method names, which is quite a nice thing to do. Makes your code really easy to understand. Let's scroll down to a bit of blank space. We'll go down here. Private avoid, copy to clipboard, and we'll just leave that as a blank method for now and we'll fill in, fill in the details next. Okay, so what we want to do, there's a little bit of code we need to write, it's not much though. So clipboard, we need a clipboard object, which is a class built into Java. So we're using the clipboard class and we'll call it clip or clipboard, whatever you want to call it, lowercase clipboard works well. So we're using our toolkit class dot get default toolkit and that's a method name and then we're calling the get system clipboard system clipboard 
Okay, so a little bit of a mouthful there. So this gives us basically a reference or a handle onto the Windows clipboard. This line of code here. Okay, and now what we want to do is set the contents of the clipboard to whatever is in our label, which is our password label, this chap here. Okay, so we'll go clipboard dot set contents to something. Okay, now it would be nice if it was that easy if you could just say password uh, label dot get text. Okay, that would be lovely, but you need to do a little bit of work. Okay, and there's one more thing you need to do, and you need to tell Java what sort of flavor of data you're giving the clipboard. So we're going to make it so it's string flavored, so it's a string selection. Selection equals new string selection. String selection. And what we're going to do is get the password label, and we want to get the text to that. Okay, so whatever we set the label to here, we did a set text to set the password, so that it was visible on, on in the GUI user interface. Here we're getting the password back down here. Okay, and uh, putting that in the selection object, which is a type string selection, so we can tell Java we're passing, or tell Windows that we're putting a string or text data into the clipboard. We're getting a handle on the clipboard, so that we can actually use the clipboard. And then we're setting the contents of the clipboard to our selection chap. Whatever this guy here is, that's what we're going to use down here. And that should be it. But we need to do some imports as well. So let's work out the imports. And I can write them off the top of my head, but I'll show you again how to work out the imports if ever you, if ever you get stuck. Okay, so string selection is missing. So let's copy that. And I go to my little help file here. And I just look at the, the Java help. String selection. And there's the, there's the class you need. Okay, so just copy that out of the help. Go back to your... And go up to the top of the imports. Go import. And just paste that with a semicolon on the end. Okay, that should get rid of that first error. String selection there as well. And then we've got clipboard. Let's work out where the clipboard goes. Clipboard. And that's in data, AWT data transfer dot clipboard. So copy that, control C, back to our program, import. Okay, so if you don't know what the if you don't know what the imports are, they're very easy to work out. Just look at the Java help, basically, and you can get there really quick. That should be all we need now. Control one. Set contents clipboard. Okay, so set contents and class can be applied to the given types. Let's have a look at that. Oh yes, so sorry. There's a there's a second parameter here for the set for the set contents. You got to set contents with the selection comma selection. It's very strange, but that's why the set contents method worked. If we if we go up here to clipboard, we can see why. Clipboard. So we're going to go set selection, set contents, the contents, and then the clipboard owner. Oh well, the clipboard owner. What does it matter? Yeah, it doesn't matter. You can you can put anything there really. Okay, but. Um, I generally just put the string twice, selection, selection, just to pass it through twice. But yeah, it's that first one that really matters. But that, like, that other one there, the owner, well, yeah. This works fine, so I just stick with that. Okay, so now let's do it. Control 2 to run. And we'll go generate password. And we'll go copy. And then when we paste it over here, we should have the password. And there it is. Okay, so there's a password we generated. Oh, that's the old one. Sorry, there's a new one. And that's the password we just generated. I, I two running. So there's a the password. So we're getting that out okay. That's fine. Um, so we've got the copy working. Copy to clipboard. We've got the password generating okay. That should be 20 characters. Yep, tw 20 bytes. That's fine. Um, you can easily change it with the, the arrows, or you can just highlight and go 99 to get a 99 character password. Okay, copy, and that should be 99 characters. Yep, 99 bytes, that's fine. So that's all working great. We've got the default set by default, which is good. And there's one more thing we want to do. So let's just go back to our, okay, that's just the comments, those, those two, they'll just, I'll delete those. So up here, um, what we really want to do is just change this slightly. This is where we generate the password. So we, we look at the, um, we, if, if all the checkboxes aren't selected, we can say no password characters selected. That's what we had last time. And here we're generating a password for the length. 
So we generate a, a random char type. And if it's zero, then we generate an uppercase. And if it's one and the uppercase is selected, we generate a lowercase. And if it's two and the digits is selected, we generate a digit. And if it's three and we generate a next chars is selected, special chars, we can generate another one as well. So at the moment, I'm assuming they're all selected. Okay. So what we want to do is move this out of here. So the incrementer, part of our for loop, control X, we just leave the incrementer blank. Okay. And we'll move the C++ down to here. Okay, so this is our this is our character C. I should probably call it something else. C++ looks <laughs> looks like the language C++. So in other words, we're only incrementing our loop counter if we do generate an uppercase letter password, an uppercase letter for our password here. Okay, and we do the same for each each branch of that if statement. So if 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 they, if we want to generate a lowercase and we do generate a lowercase letter, then we're adding one to our loop counter as well. Okay, see what I'm doing? So in each of, each of those branches, we, each of those branches, we're doing the same thing. So down here, if if we if we if we're supposed to be generating a, a digit for, for type three and the, or, or special characters, oh, sorry, we're doing this one. Digits and a digits checkbox is selected. So in other words, it's checked. Then we're generating a digit and we're adding one to our loop, our loop counter. We've generated a character, added it into, into our password. So we'll increment our loop counter. Okay, so this just this just means it works now, even if this 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 code will work now even if some of the checkboxes aren't selected. So if we turn that off and that off, for example, so we're just generating upper upper and lowercase letters, this code will still generate a, a password of the right length. If we had the C, if we had the C plus plus up here and not down here, um, we wouldn't be generating a password of the right length. Okay, because we're only supposed to increment our loop counter when we actually add the password into the into the password that's being generated. Adding the add the character next character into the password being generated. Okay, so now we'll do, we'll give it a good old test again. I'll just exit the old code, close that down, Control One, and we'll put, give it a thorough test now. Okay, so Control One, Control Two. There we go. So generate a password of length twenty. Copy it to the clipboard, and I'll just paste it up here. That should be twenty. Yep, twenty bytes. Perfect. Let's do another one, and we'll uncomment the upper and lowercase letters. So it's just digits and special characters. And we'll do a 20 again, generate password, and that should still be 20 characters. Yep, 20 characters, I can see it lines up perfectly, 20 characters, 20 bytes. And we'll do it uh, with just special characters. Generate password and copy, and look at the, <laughs> okay, because we've only got a few special characters turned on. So it's just 20 characters, 20 bytes, 20 characters, perfect. So that's all working great. Let me just put it back how it was to just show you how it worked, just so I can clarify that. Okay, so I'll take that out, take that out, take that out, take that out, and I'll put the C++ back in the loop counter, back in the loop incrementer section. Okay, so I've taken it out of the, the branches down here, and I'll put the C++ back up here, so the loop counter is getting incremented every time regardless. Okay, let's run that and see what, see what it does. Oh, see what the password's there. <laughs> yep, they're not going to compile, no way. Okay, control one, control two. Let's turn off all but the special characters and we'll generate a password of length 20. Okay, does that look 20 to you? Copy. And it's only five bytes. So only five characters were generated, it's supposed to be 20. And that's because the incrementer does it always. So here we're, here we're saying, get, get a char type, so it's gonna be zero, one, two, or three. If it's zero and the uppercase checkbox is selected, then we're generating an uppercase letter. Okay, so this is incrementing always the counter, assuming the assuming the, the character had been added onto the password or pended onto the password. So we don't want that there. We want to do it down in the branches of the loops, branches of the if statements. Okay, that makes it work. Um, okay, so that's three that's three things we've done. We've fixed it, so I'll fix the password generation. Uh, copy the clipboard and we've fixed the password so I think that's probably enough for this for today that's uh, a few things done and so what we can do next is um, save and load settings to file so when you exit the program the settings are saved we'll leave that for next time if there's interest okay thanks for watching have a nice day